Hi, this is Alfauzia Nihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is measures of dispersion. Measures of dispersion can be divided into two different categories. First one is absolute measures. Second category is relative measures. In this video, we are going to concentrate on the absolute measures. Under the topic measures of dispersion, there are actually four commonly used measures to indicate the variability or dispersion within a set of measures. They are range, quartile deviation, average deviation or mean deviation, standard deviation. So let us discuss one after the other with suitable examples. Here we go. First, we are going to start with range. Let us define range first. Range is nothing but the interval between the highest score and the lowest score. Range is a measure of variability or you can also say that it is a measure of scatteredness of the variates or observations among themselves. Actually, range does not give an idea about the spread of observations around some central value. It is just the difference between highest score and the lowest score. R is nothing but range, HS is highest score and LS is lowest score. Hope you are clear with the definition. Ok, now let us see how to compute range. I am going to take two examples. First one is for ungrouped data and second one is grouped data. Here is an example, we have two parts. The scores of 10 boys in a test are, they have listed a number of information. Same way, the scores of 10 girls in a test are these. First, you have to analyze the given data. This is an ungrouped data. So you just have to find the highest score and the lowest score. You can also list out in an ascending order or descending order. It is up to you. Or you can just have a glance over the given data and find the highest score and lowest score. And then just apply the range formula. So in this part A, the highest score is 77. No other number is greater than 77. And what about the lowest score? Lowest score is 17. The list is already arranged in ascending order. So need not worry about that. So just apply the formula for range. Range is nothing but highest score minus lowest score. So range for part A would be 77 minus 17 which is equal to 16. Does this make sense to you? In similar way we can find the range for part B. The scores of 10 girls. So here the lowest score is 48 and the highest score is 62. So what would be the range? 62 minus 48 which is equal to 14. Now just let's analyze the answers we got for part A and part B. Here we find that the scores of boys are widely spread. Thus the scores of boys vary much. But the scores of girls do not vary much. Of course they vary very less. Am I right? The difference is very less. Thus the variability of the scores of boys is more than the variability of the scores of girls. Hope you are clear with this example. So this is an example for ungrouped data. Now let us see an example for grouped data. Here is an example. We are supposed to find the range of data for the following distribution. Do you understand the difference between ungrouped data and grouped data? For ungrouped data, the da data would be very raw. There won't be any arrangement. For grouped data, it would be uh, grouped under something. So here it is grouped under class interval and frequency. So let's see how to find the range for this problem. In this case, upper true limit of the highest class is 70 to 79, which is you just have to find the average of these two. And the lower true limit of the lowest class is 20 to 29. So let's find the average of these two. We are finding the average of these two and finding the range. The answer would be very closer to the, that would be an approximate answer. So what we have to do is, the, you have to observe the class interval given. It is actually 20 to 29, 30 to 39. They are not continuous. So you have to make them continuous just by subtracting or adding 0.5 from the previous interval and including 0.5 to the next interval. So let me list out the class interval now. CI means class interval. I have subtracted 0.5 from 20 and included 0.5 to this 29. So now the class interval is 19.5 to 29.5. Same way I am subtracting 0.5 here and adding 0.5 here. Subtracting 0.5 from this 40 and adding 0.5 to 49. Same way I have done the same thing for all the class intervals. Now did you notice that the class interval is continuous. 
this end point is the starting point of the second class interval same way this is the end point of the upper limit of this class interval and that is the lower limit of the next class interval now we have made the interval continuous this is the first step whenever you are getting class interval now let's find the range so what would be the lowest score 19.5 and highest score is 79.5 let's apply the formula here therefore the range is 16 it is not necessary that you will be getting the class interval in a discontinuous way you may also get class intervals in this form so if that is the case you can directly find the lowest and the highest and apply the formula just find the difference so here we have discussed two types of examples for range first one is ungrouped and second one is for grouped data hope you understand the difference between these two we are applying the same formula but the steps and concept are a little bit different so range is an index of variability when the range is more the group is more variable the smaller the range the more homogeneous is the group range is the most general measure of spread or scatter of scores or you can also say for measures so when we wish to make a rough comparison of variability of two or more groups we may compute the range range as compared above is in a crude form or is an absolute measure of dispersion and is unfit for the purpose of comparison especially when a series are in two different units so for the purpose of comparison coefficient of range is calculated what is meant by coefficient of range it is nothing but dividing the range by the sum of the largest and smallest items now let us also discuss the advantages and disadvantages of range let's start with the advantages advantages of range range can be calculated quite easily the calculation is very simple all you have to do is identify the highest and lowest score and just apply the formula formula is nothing but just finding the difference so range can be calculated very easily second advantage is it is the simplest measure of dispersion am i right and third advantage is it is computed when we want to make a rough comparison of two or more graphs of variability so whenever uh, the we learn a new concept we can see both advantages and also there would be some limitations for something so here for range we have also limitations so here is the limitation for range actually range is not based on all the observations of the series it takes into account only the most extreme case either lower or the highest one it just helps us to make only a rough comparison of two or more groups of variability am i right we cannot say that it is an accurate one it is just an approximate one and the range takes into account the two extreme scores in a series the others are not considered so thus when n is small i mean the number of data is small or when there are large gaps in the frequency distribution the range as a measure of variability is quite unreliable so you can consider the example we discussed if the difference if the gap in between these is too large it would be difficult for us to make it continuous am i right so if that is the case calculating range would be very difficult and even if we find the range the answer is not going to be uh, closer to the accurate one am i right so these are the advantages and limitations of range i'd like to show you one more example scores of group a scores of group b is given please have a glance over the list now let's find the range for group a and range for group b for this one the range is the lowest is 3 and highest score is 33 so 33 minus 3 is 30 same way for the group b lowest is 3 highest is 93 so 93 minus 3 is 90 now you can compare the series of scores in group a and group b in group a if a single score 33 i mean the last score is changed to 93 here the range is widely changed am i right they are not closer thus a single high score may increase the range from low to high do you agree with me so this is why range is not a reliable measure of variability and we have few more limitations too let me say that too it is affected very greatly by fluctuations in sampling its value is never stable range value in a class when normally the height of the student ranges from um, 150 cm to 180 cm uh, if a dwarf when uh, whose height is 90 cm is admitted the range would shoot up from 90 cm to 180 cm so one single data would change the range and it would make a highest difference and range does not present the series and dispersion truly 
asymmetrical and symmetrical distribution can have the same range but not the same dispersion you, uh, we will be discussing about the symmetrical and asymmetric symmetrical distribution in a future videos it is of limited accuracy and it should be used with caution so uh, calculating range is very easy but using that information has just limited accuracy however we should not overlook the fact that the range is a crude measure of dispersion and is entirely unsuitable for precise and accurate studies but computing range is very very simple this is all about range under the topic measures of dispersion in case if you have any query regarding range kindly let me know see you in the next video have a great time